Hello everyone! This video is primarily intended to introduce you to China's UHV power transmission technology. As we're all aware, since the discovery of electricity, China has been distinct from other countries. A power grid is used in China for power transmission. Foreign power plants, on the other hand, mostly transmit power in the form of specific cities, despite the fact that the technology is quite simple. It's not as secure as it is in China. Before we move on further, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. China produces the most engineering graduates worldwide. The Chinese government intends to keep up its efforts to educate and train highly skilled engineers and technicians in order to continuously raise the standard of living for all Chinese citizens and to progress science and technology globally. After successfully hosting the prestigious Olympics in 2008 and the Shanghai World Expo in 2010, China is poised to reclaim the spotlight in the coming years. China will also influence the world with many of its infrastructural initiatives and foreign policy. Private companies are also heavily represented in Chinese technology, even though they, like other businesses in China, only exist as a result of Chinese power suffering. It is a very competitive and imaginative sector, though, which has its own appeal, particularly in regions where government-favorite giants haven't yet arisen. Chinese businesses cannot count on their rivals' competitors respecting their intellectual property. A large part of Chinese companies alert to engineers is due to their size and strength. With over 1.2 billion users, Tencent's WeChat has established itself as the, the de facto digital identity for Chinese citizens, enabling everything from identification and mobile banking to healthcare and food delivery. The short video software TikTok from ByteDance has gained popularity in the US and Europe. Behind these giants are a variety of medium-sized to large businesses that are frequently unheard of in Western markets. The power grid and inspection workers are the ones who scale at great heights. They're not acrobats. Instead, it's their daily duty to ascend and descend the Iron Tower and walk a tightrope from a height of 100 meters, nonetheless discreetly keeping watch over thousands of houses' lights. This type of power transmission is used in specific cities around the world, and if a problem happens in one of the power supply system's links, it can cause a large-scale power outage in the entire city. Right now, China has realized the electricity resource network. Even if difficulties arise in a single link, other lines in the grid can swiftly compensate for each city's electrical safety. China has now identified the network of power resources. Even if just one link is problematic, the safety of the electricity in each city can be swiftly compensated for by other lines in the grid. The many networks on which these transmission lines rely regarding infield installations of high-voltage lines. To achieve cross-regional transmission, these transmission lines rely on multiple networks of high-voltage lines installed in the field. The iron towers serve as support facilities for these lines. Transmission towers of this type are fairly frequent in China because China is the world's most powerful nation, and UHV transmission technology is at the forefront of the world. UHV transmission towers are, of course, used all throughout the country. Do you know where the world's tallest transmission tower is? Yes, it is located in China. The iron tower in the video is the world's tallest transmission tower. It stands 61 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower at a total elevation of 385 meters. With such a tall structure, the foundation must be solid enough to assure the tower's safety. The underlying piling foundation of the tower is 69 meters deep, comparable to the height of more than 20 stories, making the tower a world record deep. Because the tower is built on substantial foundations, even in the face of earthquakes and high winds, it will not collapse in terms of corrosion resistance. This immediately covers a technical gap in anti-corrosion materials in China and considerably increases the transmission tower's service life. Why is China investing so substantially in the construction of a 385-meter-high electricity transmission tower? The reason for this is that these high-voltage lines must traverse the Yangtze River. If a 150-meter-tall tower is used, it's not sufficient for the railroad to cross the Yangtze River, which spans 2,550 meters. If the tower is built too low, in the middle of the Yangtze River, the wire may be hung directly into the river. This poses a safety risk. Furthermore, the Yangtze River is a vital inland waterway in China, and transmission lines should not jeopardize its safety. Large ships pass through the Yangtze River every day, which must leave adequate space for the massive ships while also considering future land planning on both sides of the Yangtze River. Additionally, the transmission's cross-border distance, the line reaches a height of 2,550 meters, and the cable's natural vertical arc from the tower to the opposite side is 256.8 meters. To ensure the safety of electricity transmission, the tower's height must reach 385 meters with a safety height between the ship and the cable. There is another option. 
This would entail digging a tunnel directly over the Yangtze River. If China constructs a transmission pipeline line at the Yangtze River's mouth, the wires run straight through the tunnel. This approach doesn't affect the smooth transit but also makes subsequent maintenance easier. This appears to be a wonderful idea. However, excavating a tunnel is more expensive and complex than building a tower. So in such circumstances, China's only option is to construct power transmission towers and successfully navigate the Yangtze River. The tower's construction clearly displays China's infrastructure strength, and it's precisely because of these electrical facilities that the city can be powered. Ordinary Chinese folks no longer have to be concerned about electricity outages. The transmission tower spanning the Yangtze River can meet at least 8 million people's needs. The construction of the world's tallest tower is significant for China's electricity system. Every day, grid workers must climb hundreds of meters of the tower to work high to properly maintain the tower and the grid. Such a scene. It appears thrilling within China. If there is no electrical grid, bold workers get paid. For thousands of families, there are no bright lights. They look great at work. Working at a high altitude is risky. Such work is not suitable for an average person. Walking 100 meters above the ground on a high altitude wire. It's terrifying to watch as if it'll come off by accident. Only by overcoming their fear of heights can electricity maintenance employees succeed. Whether it's the wind and rain or the scorching sun, they frequently require high-altitude work, especially during the sweltering summer months, donning work clothing in the scorching heat for five or six hours of work, packed with several types of bitterness. The public demand for electricity is highest during the hottest and coldest seasons, which is also the busiest time for power employees. And the electricity repairman frequently needs to walk at an altitude of more than 100 meters. The job is exceedingly hazardous. Electricity service technicians dedicate their youth in silence amid the highlands and fields through their own sweat may perhaps pay a greater price. Setting out at high heights is difficult and dangerous, and they must travel between two electric towers on a tightrope. Every day, they are exposed to the harsh sunlight. They get up at 5 a.m. every day after cleaning and eating, ascend the tower, and don't come down until after 7 p.m. or when it's dark. They have no set commute time and getting off work in the field is hampered by the lack of light. As a result, they must maximize daylight hours. They go out for inspection against the rising sun in the early morning and return to their dwelling in the evening. They're sustained by a number of thin and long cables and move between various operational points. This is the actual day-to-day -day work of frontline electric utility employees. Their profession is as risky for ordinary people as walking a tightrope. However, for themselves, it could be a routine job as a breadwinner to safeguard bright and comfortable families. Their efforts merit our appreciation. Do you believe life is easy in this world? For the others, it means sailing against the current. Are these odds really worth the risk? Let's know what you think in the comment box.